the cave. The giant ran on and on, but now a curious change took place in his way of running. He seemed suddenly to go into a higher gear. Faster and faster he went, and soon he was travelling at such a speed that the landscape became blurred. The wind stung Sophie's cheeks. It made her eyes water. It whipped her head back and whistled in her ears. She could no longer feel the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation they were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over land or sea. This giant had some sort of magic in his legs. The wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down again into the blanket to prevent her head from being blown away. Was it really possible that they were crossing oceans? It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched in the blanket and listened to the howling of the wind. It went on for what seemed like hours. Then, all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The pace began to slow down. Sophie could feel the giant's feet pounding once again over the earth. She poked her head up out of the blanket to have a look. They were in a country of thick forests and rushing rivers. The giant had definitely slowed down and was now running more normally, although normal was a silly word to use to describe a galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling through a great forest, then down into a valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. And soon he was galloping over a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth. The ground was flat and pale yellow. Great lumps of blue rock were scattered around, and dead trees stood everywhere like skeletons. The moon had long since disappeared, and now the dawn was breaking. Sophie, still peering out from the blanket, saw suddenly ahead of her a great craggy mountain. The mountain was dark blue, and all around it the sky was gushing and glistening with light. Bits of pale gold were flying among delicate frosty white flakes of cloud, and over to one side the rim of the morning sun was coming up, red as blood. Right beneath the mountain, the giant stopped. He was puffing mightily. His great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. Directly in front of them, Lying against the side of the mountain, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as easily as if it had been a football. And now, where the stone had been, there appeared a vast black hole. The hole was so large, the giant didn't even have to duck his head as he went in. He strode into the black hole, still carrying Sophie in one hand, the trumpet and the suitcase in the other. As soon as he was inside, he stopped and turned and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from outside. Now that the entrance had been sealed up, there was not a glint of light inside the cave. All was black. Sophie felt herself being lowered to the ground. Then the giant let go of the blanket completely. His footsteps moved away. Sophie sat there, in the dark, shivering with fear. He's getting ready to eat me, she told herself. He'll probably eat me raw, just as I am. Or perhaps he'll boil me first. Or he'll have me fried. It'll drop me like a rasher of bacon into some gigantic frying pan sizzling with fat. A blaze of light suddenly lit up the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw an enormous cavern with a high, rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves, and on the shelves there stood row upon row of glass jars. There were jars everywhere. They were piled up in the corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor, there was a table, twelve feet high, and a chair to match. 
the giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie saw that under the cloak he was wearing a sort of collarless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that didn't seem to have any buttons. His trousers were faded green and were far too short in the legs. On his bare feet he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a large hole at the end where his toes stuck out. Sophie, crouching on the floor of the cave in her nighty, gazed back at him through thick, steel-rimmed glasses. She was trembling like a leaf in the wind, and a finger of ice was running up and down the length of her spine. Ha! <laughs> shouted the giant, walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has us got here? His booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder.